This is an era where freedom is a result of how we speak. So California is known for its, um, let me say this right. California is known for its uh, free thought. This year is a war over the voice of your free thought. Now, that's an important thing to write down. And another thing the Lord said to me during worship, and I want you to write these things down because these are the sort of things we say. Uh, the Lord said, uh, it will be a great shaking this year in California. Well, you know, that doesn't take a, a big profit. Uh, it will be a great shaking, but tell my people they will remain standing and their voice will be heard out of the shaking. Now, I don't know that that means an earthquake. I think you're going to have such a governmental shakeup that it starts setting you on a new course. Now, now I'm sure you'll have earthquakes. You live in earthquakes. Uh, now, here's something else that's important. Here is the look of the year ahead. And I want you to get this built down in you because a lot of times we will miss, even though... The decade, the era is about our voice determining our future. It is linked with coming face to face. So that means there, is, there are moments where you're going to come face to face and you choose and, and it's out of that choice that your future is determined. It's like where Moses, God chose Moses. His mother, I love this scripture so much out of Hebrews chapter 11. His mother had three months of faith. She knew what to do with him for three months. And then she had to make a shift. See, this is what people don't understand about faith. Faith is a response we have toward an object. And it has a t it's, it, faith is linked with time and place. In other words, how we're responding here in worship is causing our faith to come into a new dimension while we're here. Faith just isn't something you just walk constantly and you're looking for out here. Faith is where all of a sudden you're in a certain place, certain time, and you're making a response to who your object of faith is, which is the God of this universe. And in that, Moses' mother, after three months, knew she had to make a shift. So she put him in the river, and he ends up in Pharaoh's court. And then what happens to him in his training when he's 40 years old is he, he, his emotions take over and pull him out of faith. And remember, he murders this uh, uh, Egyptian over the Egyptian killing a Hebrew slave. Well, what happened was something in his bloodline stirred up that he had really uh, had always been there, you know, being Hebrew, and he expressed anger in a way that caused him to have to run to another place. Well, it took 40 years for the Lord to wait for another window of opportunity. Now, this is the way you want to see what Dutch is saying. Some of you have been waiting 40 years, and you've made a few mistakes. Poke somebody in the side. You've made a few mistakes, but it doesn't mean you don't have a window. You've still got windows coming over you. You're just going to have to look, at, look for them, all right? And uh, uh, in the midst of it, I wrote a book about that out there. It's called Redeeming the Time because... We have to redeem the time because days are evil. We have to be circumspect on how we see our surroundings so that we can redeem time. That means it's already been bought back, but we have to enter into the operation of displaying how the Lord bought it back for us. All right? Now, and so... Moses, 40 years later, the Lord comes down and because the people start screaming. 
it says they began to cry out. They began to groan. Now think of a move of intercession across California where people are crying out. Well, let me say this to you. God is going to respond to you. And he's going to find people. He's going to find people to move into places, governmental places. Now, this is what I saw over you guys when we started worshiping. The Lord said, tell them they are going to move what they have established here in, because it was when the shofar was sounding. Out of that shofar, it was coming from a mountain. And the Lord said, tell them they're going to move what they've established here to the mountains. And that says to me, there's a societal call for you to establish this in government and in, in business. And, and I mean, there's going to be the greatest healing move uh, when they offer you an office in a building and say, you know, we want healing to be here for our people. We want a sound to be here once a month. Now, we're going to have to be ready to move in that. We are not going to be just relegated to our present state of place. That's the way you want to think about that. Well, God comes down because these people are crying out, and Egypt finds uh, Moses in Midian, and he, a bush begins to burn. Well, bushes burn out in the desert. It's hot. What made this bush different was it burned, but it never burned up. So it caught Moses' attention. Now, this is what is so important for you right now. And this is where we get passive under the atmosphere we're in. It caught Moses' attention, and all of a sudden it says, Mo one of the best scriptures I know. Moses turned to see the bush. Now, that is the key to what he was saying last night. All of a sudden, there's going to be something that is different in your familiar settings. And all of a sudden, it's going to catch your attention, and you're going to turn to look at it. And when you do, God's going to arrest you. And say, I've just been waiting for you to make this turn. And remember, the Lord said, to, hey, Moses said, how are you going to do this? And he said, you're going to go do this and you're going to say that I am sent you to do it. The bush. Now, quit. You got to get out of your brain and all this. The bush, but he didn't say, tell them the bush sent you that was burning out in the field. Listen, people, we got to get to a new le level. We got to get to a new level, really, of the way we communicate things. He said, tell them I am sent you. I am that I am. Do you know what that means? Moses, I will be to you what you need me to be at any moment. Now, that becomes important as we make this shift. I love what Stacy was prophesying last night, that you can miss the new. The Bible tells us that, but you, you want, it's harder than what you think because God is coming down in the midst of your familiar settings. That's why I shared that about healing. God is coming down in the midst of your familiar settings, and he has a way to communicate to you. He has a way to communicate to this state. And we just have to recognize how he's coming down. That's what we're here to tell you. And uh, if you will get unfamiliar, uh, defamiliar, defamiliarize yourself with your atmosphere. Nazareth. It was just a familiar spirit. They, they said, we know who you are. We know who your brothers are. We know who your mother is, your sisters. But they didn't know his new identity. They knew him as a carpenter and an and a incredible teacher and probably the best person that Nazareth has ever had, but they didn't know him as Messiah. And he had just come from being baptized, gone through 40 days in the wilderness, facing off hell. When you face off hell, you become something different. 
face off hell and ended up back at home. And they were the same, but he was different. Now, that's the thing you want to understand. Everything around you might look the same, but God called you here these last two days for you to be different. So you can see things in a different way.